once folks make it past optionals, they get the idea of optionals and unwrapping and force unwrapping and so forth, then they hit easily, I think, the biggest hurdle of learning Swift. I actually asked folks yesterday whether they found optionals or this new thing harder, and this optionals, about 30% of folks said optionals. The remaining folks said closures. They found closures ah. the hardest thing to learn in Swift. And it's it's true, there are hard things. So again, someone says to you, yeah. uh, Chris, you, you wrote Swift, or you wrote Start Swift at, at Apple. How would you explain closures to them? Well, see, that's, that's an interesting question. I haven't thought about that nearly as much. Um, I think the question, so, so this is not a thing that you would teach a new learner in the first day of Swift, right? This is something that I think comes up when you're talking about existing frameworks that take function pointers and they take closures, right? And so I think there it really would be grounded in the API you're trying to teach. And so if you're teaching map filter reduce kinds of things, and so you're talking about uh, collection processing kinds of operations, then I think you explain it in terms of the context of what you're doing. And so you're saying, hey, if you want to do a filter, well, this this is how do you know what kind of elements to select? Well, you need a little expression, and you explain it mechanically in terms of, well, you just put that expression in terms of inside of curly braces. And so this is how we pass an expression. Mm -hmm. right? um, the, the challenge with teaching programming in the context of something like UIKit is that UIKit uh, comes back to this idea of, of playgrounds being easier to teach as well. UIKit is hard, <laughs> right? UIKit is not designed for progressive disclosure of complexity. It is, it is an amazing framework, but it is, uh, it's a power user framework, right? And so it was not, it was not built in that, with that design premise. And so I think that there you kind of get thrown in the deep end quite quickly to achieve simple things. And um, I think Swift UI is much more promising in this way, where I think that the design center for it, the, the folks working on designing the API has really thought more about like, okay, let's make simple things really simple. Let's make it so you can get something done with very little code. Let's make it so you can grow and scale to more complexity as you want to, and you can introduce new concepts progressively. And um, I don't know if that's a consequence of Swift uh, turning the culture a little bit and saying this is the right way to do things, or if it's just, or maybe there's Swift language features that enable that that aren't really practical in UIKit. I don't know, or history. There's many different possible causations for that, but um, but I think that that is that's so with closures. I think it's really about the context in which you explain them, which really comes down to the APIs. Okay. There's a, a, a small question here, a bit of a tangent from uh, Robert J. Clegg, who says, talking of closures, why is the in part of the closure syntax there? Why is, it, why is the word in part uh, of the syntax? Okay, Paul, can I be honest with you? You're, you're not going to just get mad at me or just, anything? Just between you and me and nobody else at all. Totally okay, secret. Okay, Go ahead. Don't, don't tell anybody. Okay. The, it might be because nobody could come up with a better word. <laughs> Nice. Don't tell anybody, okay? <laughs> but uh, it could be that this was discussed at length a million times, both internally to Apple and on the mailing list, and it might be that nobody came up with a better idea. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I will tell you that uh, if somebody knows what in stands for or means, then they should tell me because I don't know either. And there you go, folks.